Distance Without Feet is from the book The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. Good morning students. In this video, we are going to discuss about the summary of Footprints Without Feet. This is the fourth chapter, fifth chapter from your book The Footprints Without Feet and the name of the chapter is Footprints Without Feet. Now we start with the summary. Footprints on the steps. Two boys stared in surprise. Fresh, muddy imprints of a pair of bare feet on the step of a house in London. So there are two boys and they find fresh, muddy imprints of pair, pair of feet, but they cannot see anyone whose imprint, imprint is this and they are surprised. No man to be seen. More footmarks appeared one after another descending the steps and progressing towards the street. And what did they find? As if someone was coming down the stairs and they were walking towards the street. But they could find the fresh footprints on the stairs, but no, no one or no body could be seen or no feet could be seen which was making these footprints. The Invisible Man. A scientist named Griffin carried out experiments to make the human body invisible. So there was a scientist named Griffin. He was a great scientist and he made an experiment to make things uh, transparent, invisible. And he tries it on his own body, swallowed a red drugs, body became transparent but remained as solid as glass. And Griffin with this gift of his that his body had become transparent or invisible, he started misusing this and he becomes a lawless person. Landlord disliked him because he did different kind of experiments in his room, did not pay the rent on time. Landlord dis uh, disliked him and he wanted to eject him, that is throw him out of the house. In revenge, because Gri uh, Griffin had become a lawless person, so in revenge he set fire to the house, removed clothes to avoid being seen. And when he was transparent, when he was invisible, he was invisible only when he had no clothes on. But when he became, when he wore his clothes, he could be visible. So he removed his clothes so that he could not be seen by the others. Became wanderer without clothes, without money. And now he didn't have a house, no place, no shelter. So he became a wanderer without clothes, without money. Without clothes, it was winter season, he felt cold. So he entered a big London store, broke open boxes, took warm clothes, put on shoes, an overcoat and a white brimmed hat, became fully dressed, visible person. And soon he put on the shoes, overcoat, white brimmed hat and once he was dressed, he was fully visible. He was feeling very hungry, so whatever food he could find, he ate that food and he slept on a pile of quilts. Shop assistant arrived in the morning. Next morning when the shop assistant came in, they found the boxes of the clothes and many things all ransacked and all open. And they found Griffin sleeping on a pile of quilts and they started chasing. Griffin panicked and ran and there was a chase around the shop. The only way to escape from there was to take off his newly found clothes. And once again he was in the street naked in the chill. Hurried to Dury Lane, the center of the theater world, found a suitable shop. So he quickly went to the uh, one of the lanes, that is the Dury Lane, and this was center for the theater. There were shops which sold costumes for the theater, and he found a suitable shop there. I, out of, when he went inside the shop, he slapped the shopkeeper, went inside, he wore his, uh, he came out wearing bandages around his forehead, dark glasses, false nose, a big bushy whiskers and a large hat. So he completely changed his appearance wearing all these things. He attacked the shopkeeper, robbed all the money and then took a train to Iping, booked two rooms at the local inn. Now Griffin at Iping. The arrival of the stranger in inn at winter was an unusual event. Many strangers, many visitors used to come to this place because this was a very beautiful place. It was a quite an Quiet place, so many visitors used to come during the season. But here in this winter season, no one liked to come because it was very cold here. But it was unusual to have this uh, guest at such a time. Mrs. Halls, the landlord's 
landlord's wife she was very friendly why she had become very friendly because it was on the um, it was not the season for guest and now she had got a guest here who was going to pay her well so she had become very friendly with this man griffin told her he did not wish to be disturbed said accident when asked that why he covered bandage his face from head to bottom he was covered he said that his face had been affected in an accident now mrs hall she is the owner of the inn was happy as griffin griffin paid her in advance so excused his strange habits and irritable temper griffin had a very irritable temper he did not want to be interrupted he did not want to talk to her. and whenever uh, mrs hall went to talk to him he spoke to her in a very rude way but mrs in um, mrs hall she did not care about all these things because she was happy that griffin paid her in advance after some time griffin ran out of ran out of the stolen money that he had stolen from the shop uh, in the in in the lanes of london and he pretended he was expecting a check check and when asked for money for the rest of the months for the rest of the food when mrs hall asked him for money he said that he would pay her soon as he was expecting a check one day griffin stole ma- money again this time clergyman and wife are awakened by he attacked he entered the house of a clergyman and the clergyman and his wife they were awakened by the noise in the study heard chink of money being taken from the desk they flung open the door and were shocked to find that it was empty they went inside the room they could hear someone picking up the money they could hear the clink of the the chink of the money the money the coins being counted and kept in a bag but they could not find anyone there desk had been opened housekeeping money was missing griffin discovered by mrs hall griffin skate now griffin he comes back home by that time mrs hall and mr hall had entered the room of griffin and they were surprised to see griffin's door wide open they went inside the room the bed clothes were cold the clothes and bandage were lying about in the room and when they went inside the room what did they find that griffin was not there the bed clothes were cold that means he had not slept on the bed for quite a long time the clothes and the usual clothes and the bandages that he wore they were all lying about in the room soon they were still investigating what is the matter in the room suddenly they hear a sniff she hears a sniff close to her ear a hat on the bed post leapt up and dashed itself on her face and there was a hat on the bed suddenly the hat leaped up in the uh, in the air and it hit against the face of mrs uh, hall bedroom chair sprung into the air and they charged they attacked her the chair she could not see anyone she just saw the chair rising up in the air and hitting her chair pushed both of them off out of the room slammed and locked the door after them and the, it was the chair that pushed both mr and mrs hall out of the room and locked the door mrs hall was convinced about the presence of spirits mrs hall she was so scared that she thought that there's some spirit in that room news of theft at clergyman's house spread and at the same time when this was happening in mrs hall's house there was the news of clergyman's theft in iping usually no theft took place it was a small village each one knew each other so there was no question of theft but suddenly this news spread everywhere griffin gave mrs hall rent money everyone suspected griffin of robbery and mrs hall re- received her rent money but everyone suspected that the money had disappeared without anyone being seen and they suspected that it must be griffin and also because the rent money had been paid by griffin so mrs hall questioned griffin about the strange occurrences with the chair he threw off the bandage when mrs hall asked about that how the chair and other things rose in the air he threw off the bandage whiskers spectacles and even his nose and people there without any covering without any bandage without any whiskers and all the uh, people were staring at a headless man so the invisible man was suddenly coming in front of them mr jeffers the constable arrived the police was informed and jeffers arrived tried to get hold of her, uh, griffin who became more and more invisible as he threw off one garment after the other and griffin to uh, uh, save himself from the arrest he started throwing off his clothes one by one and the more clothes his garment the more he uh, garments he discarded the more invisible he became and after some time it was just impossible to find out where he is 
Finally, a shirt flew into the air. Constable struggled with someone he could not see at all. And suddenly, the Jeffers, he finds a shirt flying into the air. And it seems that he was fighting. He was trying to hold on to something or someone or fight with someone which was just like air. He could not see anyone. Some people tried to hit, help him hit by blows and seemed to come from nowhere. Some people who had gathered there, they came to help Jeffers, but they were hit by blows. And where these blows came from, they could not find out because the man was invisible. Where he was hitting them, where he was there in front of them, they could not see. And soon, Jeffers was knocked unconscious and Griffin escaped from that house. So, uh, uh, thank you very much. I hope this helps you to understand the chapter. Thank you.